Hello, everybody. Welcome. My name is Roland, and the program is called Shedding Shackles. Yes, there are spiritual solutions to emotional problems. Most of us have emotional problems, and they go way back to when you were a little child and you were upset. Now, your parents, they undoubtedly did the best they could. They didn't mean to upset you. It wasn't their goal, but that's what they did. And they somehow thought that in order to control you, to motivate you, to shape your character, to teach you, they felt that they had to get you emotional. They thought they had to get you excited about doing good things and afraid of doing wrong things. And they somehow felt that if they made you excited, that that was good. And if you did something wrong, they had to make you feel bad. Well, unfortunately, what occurred was you became totally outwardly directed. You became outwardly directed and things should have been natural, then became artificial. See, I will temporarily pause that and then fast forward to the future, in other words, to now. I've been talking about when you were a little tiny child, now let's talk about now. Now, why do you need pills to calm you down? Why do you need alcohol to calm you down? Why do you need to listen to nice music to make you feel good? Why do you have to watch comedians to make you happy? See? Why do you have to go to events or concerts or listen to entertainers or watch entertainers to entertain you? Why? It should come naturally. You should be able to naturally find natural things to entertain you and keep you busy and from which to grow. And you should be naturally happy, naturally spontaneous most of the time, naturally calm most of the time. That's exactly what you should be. And if you're not, it's precisely because of what I said earlier. It happened when you were a little child and it came to the point that you were always looking to the outside, looking, see, to your parents to make sure that they weren't angry, that they weren't upset, see, or that you didn't displease them, trying to please teachers, trying to please coaches, trying to please parents, and trying to please the powerful peer group. Yes, that's right. The peer group that had bullies and it had those that were popular and those that were unpopular, and it knew how to tease and taunt and pressure so that you would conform and be a part of the group and not stand out as an individual and make them feel ashamed for their conformity. So now the question is, what are you going to do about it? You have to find a solution that's outside of the system, so to speak. Christ came, and what was his message? His message was, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And indeed, the kingdom of God is at hand, but in order to enter the kingdom of God, you have to repent. That's right, you do. And you have to, what's the word? What's the word to use? It's a change of heart. Now, how do you have a change of heart? How do you repent? Well, you need to come in contact with Jesus and his light and his love. You have to feel it deep in your being. Have you ever been around someone that was so, I hate to use the word good, but I'll use the word good, that was so good, they were so honest, they were so truthful that it made you feel embarrassed and ashamed to be around them? Well, it's something like that. When he draws dear, you become aware of uh, those parts of you that have been totally externalized and which have come from the outside. Now, the kingdom of God, remember Christ said, the kingdom of God is not in, uh, I forget how he said it, 
It's not in eating or in drinking or in rituals or in outside things. It's, it's an inside job. It's an inside thing. So you're not going to find the kingdom of God out there. You're not going to find it in a book, in a classroom, in a building, in some ritual, in some group. You're not going to find it out there. It's inside. Where did you lose your connection to the inside? You lost it out there. Remember I said when you were a little child, people were mean, people were confusing, people pressured you, people teased you, people tried to motivate you and change you and mold your character and do things to you. And you reacted and reacted and reacted emotionally to them. And when you reacted emotionally, pretty soon you were totally externalized. And then when you were, when you lost that inner connection, so here it is, when you are emotionalized, you lose the inner connection. You could have grown to be a perfectly happy, a perfectly happy Albert Einstein. You've seen pictures of him riding his bicycle without socks on. You've seen that there was something free and happy-go-lucky about him, especially when he was younger. Well, it all came from within. And that which came from within also included the discoveries that he made. So, yeah, you could have been an Einstein, a Madame Curie. You could have been a Ruth. Or you could have been a Paul. You could have been a Nikola Tesla. You could have been a pathfinder, a pioneer, an explorer. But instead, you became outwardly directed. Then you had to look for everything from the outside. And then they had to spoon-feed you. They had to spoon-feed you an education where you, you could have been inwardly educated. You, they had to spoon-feed you comedians and entertainment where it could have come from within naturally. So you became outer-directed. You lost the inner connection. So now all you need to do is refine it. Refine the inner connection with your Creator and His Son. And it begins with finding the truth. And how do you find it? One day, there you are, pressuring your child or being impatient or being angry or judging someone. And all of a sudden, you look at yourself and you see that you've been spending all your time judging and hating and resenting and, and trying to do things to other people. And you see that you yourself have issues. You yourself are wrong. You become just like the people that did it to you when you were a little child. You were innocent and inwardly directed and spontaneous. And life was beautiful. And then they did a number on you. And you lost it. But you can refine it. But in order to refine it, look, the whole system. Take a look at the system now. Would you please take a look at the system? And any of you who have gotten involved in any way, you eventually discovered that it is heartless and that it is false and that it is cruel and that it has no tolerance for innocence. It has no tolerance for truth. And you will discover that. And then you will have to realize that you're not going to find it in the system. You're going to have to find it in the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is at hand. And it begins with the truth. You become aware of the truth. You see your own wrong, and you regret what you see about yourself. What do they call it? They call it repentance. They call it remorse. They call it sorrow. You see your own wrong. But instead of crying crocodile tears and feeling sorry for yourself, instead you just see that you're wrong, and you regret what you see and you realize that you can't change yourself, then God answers 
that sincere soul's cry, and he shows you ever so gently your mistake. Johnny Wooden. Do you remember Johnny Wooden? Johnny Wooden was the coach of the UCLA basketball team. He won 10 national NCAA championships, including seven in a row. Johnny Wooden said that a coach, a good coach, is someone who can correct you without making you resentful. Isn't that beautiful? Well, why don't you let your conscience, which is your closest link to God, that's your contact. Do you realize that your contact, your yes, your conscience is your contact with the kingdom of God? It's from God, your conscience. And when he makes you aware that you're being impatient or you're being mean or you're being phony or you're being hateful or you're being selfish, when you become aware of that, just be aware of it. Don't try to do anything. Don't try to run from it. Don't reach for your iPhone. Don't reach for a drink. Don't reach for music. Just be aware of it. And God is rubbing your nose a little bit in your wrong, but he does it in a way that you don't become resentful. You see it. And it's a sad glad. You're sad to see you're wrong, but you're glad to see it. Well, that's God's gentle correction. And then you know what? Not only do you then realize, and this is so beautiful, that he forgives you, but he also changes you because now he's taking you into his kingdom. Now he is responsible for changing you. He takes the burden of your sin upon himself, or Christ takes it upon himself, and they change you. It's the most wonderful thing, and it's magic. Find the magic. Find the kingdom. Find your creator and his son, and life will be sweet, and the birds will sing beautifully, and the sky will be blue, and then you can be a better parent, a better mom, a better dad, a better partner, a better neighbor, and you will make wonderful discoveries, and life will become a journey, a journey of adventure, and a joy, unspeakable. May it be so for you. May it be so for you.